this meeting to order, please stand for the invocation given by Apostle Daly. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. On the pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Eric, you want to talk about the city, town, wastewater, Kings Plaza pump station? Uh, the council president and member of councils, we have two items on a business agenda that we would like to see move, or on a conference agenda that we would like to see move to tonight's business agenda. The first is the city of town uh, wastewater agreement. There's a memo in here from city manager Tabelski in regards to a relationship that we would like to proceed with with the town to increase capacity at the Kings Plaza pump station. And I'll turn it over to uh, Brett Frank to talk more about that. Yeah, so if, uh, first of all, thank you. So basically what you've got, the town of Batavia was awarded a grant uh, from the New York City Community <coughs> Development Block Grant uh, to upgrade the Kings Plaza pump station and make improvements to the existing water main uh, that connects to the city sewer system. They are over capacity right now. Um, the pump station has a maximum capacity of 0. Uh, 0. 0.54 million gallons per day, and the town would like to plan for future growth at the pump station and install a pump that can handle roughly a million gallons per day in sewer capacity. There's concern with their current exceedance of the contractual uh, sewer limits and the full capacity of the plant, and believe we should not yet approve a capacity of one million gallons per day. This agreement will address these concerns and proposes modifications to ensure that the town adheres to their current capacity flows of 0.54 MGD. Uh, these modifications include smaller impellers rated at the same capacity as the existing pumps and the ability for the city to monitor flows from the pump station in real time. Uh, the agreement also uh, has the town and city mutually agreeing, agreeing to have the town install meters at the four pump stations to monitor flows for billing purposes. Uh, if the capacity limit of 0.54 million gallons per day average daily flow is exceeded at the uh, pump station, daily uh, penalties will be levied by the city. Uh, third thing is a new 12 inch force main will be installed from Kings Plaza pump station to River and South Main Streets and the city has the ability to inspect that project. We will continue to negotiate with the town on their future capacity pur purchase and we are preparing to engage engineering services to study the potential to expand our treatment capacity at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, that would be at the cost of the town of Batavia to do so. Uh, so the recommendation to City Council would be to pass this resolution and authorize the City Manager to execute the New York State DEC BSP-5 form so that the town can complete the King's Plaza pump station and force main project. So what you're saying is we want to let them complete the project, but downsize it for now with different impellers and whatnot so that it's not exceeding Correct. required allowable that they're using now. Right? So we're still going to allow them to put in the bigger pump just because engineering wise it wouldn't make sense to put in the smaller pump, go back in a later time and put in the correct size pump. Right. We're going to allow them to put in the correct size pump but mechanically limit those flows right. while also having um, constant monitoring of the flow. So. And, and if in the future they want, we, you know, we can expand it, yep. it's a matter of an upgrade versus a total right. reinstall. It's, it's it changing out those impellers. Right. Simple as that. Yep. Uh, yeah, is there anything in there where we can actually stop them when if they exceed the limit and we can just stop them from yes. putting any more? Yes. Because I don't care about the fines as much. I don't want to end up in a situation like we had here uh, a year ago with a another person discharging, another organization discharging a higher rate of sewage because we don't know what the DEC is going to do a year down the road either. So, and it's in the green, in the agreement? Okay, so thank are you. Are you looking for a mechanical shutoff or just? It's whatever the city yeah, has to be limited to that point. Right, but I mean. Okay. And what, what happens is it'll be cut off there and that'll just start to fill their wet well. Okay. That's how that so 
if we would use an agreement to force them to turn it on, or could we flick a switch and like cut it off? The we, city we, code provides the city with the authority to do that. Yes. If it determines it's unsafe. So we'll send a crew over there, and they can. And just to be clear, I mean, we do have in this agreement uh, the ability to, you know, have penalties on them for going over that, which it's in there, but we haven't stipulated what those penalties would be. And I agree with Bob that sometimes they find it's cheaper to exceed right. and pay the penalty, and that's not solving our problem, and they're getting away cheap to cause a problem for us. So that's, I agree with making sure that we don't, I'd rather not see the penalties I'd rather see the flow not increase. Yeah. So, anyone uh, else? I, I, you know, also I can see, in, you know, if development continues, that they'd have to put in some sort of a treatment area of their own, possibly. Well, and that, and that was kind of the fifth point there. We're actually engaging in those engineering services to potentially expand the wastewater treatment plant. And that would all be at the cost of the town of Batavia to do those engineering services. Right, I read that, yeah. Those, okay, right. thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Everyone understand what we're talking about here? Yeah? There's a lot was kind of yeah. transformed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we in consensus to move that to tonight's business? Yes. Okay, let's move. Next one is the uh, Creek Park. Yeah, so the second one of the uh, special conference meeting is a license agreement with the Batavia Development Corp to move forward with our Creek Park purchasing, and they are asking for an access line agreement for the Creek Park in in a nutshell, the easiest thing, and George, feel free to jump in, or Tammy, as I say this, part of the Creek Park property um, that we're, that the BDC and, and subsequently the city is trying to get from, or take over, take over is not the best word, but from, from the um, Creek Park LLC, there's a sliver of it, right as you pull into the parking lot of the ice rink, that is technically their property, and they're looking for a, a license agreement, if I said that right. Yeah, right now the town owns that property. They acquired it in connection with build out of the trail. And the uh, BDC entity is in the process of acquiring from the town. As they did their search and survey, the survey identified the encroachment. So typical procedure for real estate is to do a license agreement to allow the encroachment onto the adjoining property that you have identified through the survey and update process. So that's basically what this license agreement would do is account for the fact that there is an encroachment of the city's parking lot onto that property and one smaller encroachment to the back of the property onto that property as well um, and provide for typical terms and conditions under the license agreement for the city to use that. So. Any questions? Yeah, if we didn't have that, if, let's say uh, they want to do something with that property, that little sliver, and we can't use it, that shouldn't hurt our entrance to the parking lot anyway, should it? I don't I know exactly where the, the rows are. Pardon me? I don't know exactly where the rows are in conjunction to the license. I, I prefer to Brett or uh, Eric for that. But um, the idea with this is that we would have the right to continue to use it as it exists now that the survey has identified that encumbrance or encroachment. And it's just providing for the rights of the parties moving forward so that that use can continue with protection, indemnity, insurance, typical um, requirements that would exist under a license agreement. Okay. I don't believe it would, based on the, the drawings that we're provided with, I don't believe that it would actually inhibit us from getting into the parking lot and using the parking lot. It's just part of the south east corner of it. Right, because well, I can see the day where we're going to have to increase our parking lot size back there. And according to your drawing, there's still plenty of room that we could uh, put more parking area in because the ice rink they're doing so many events now they're getting quite busy Potentially, I don't I don't see us necessarily doing that as that's part of the existing lot to begin with I think Isn't, isn't that area mostly used it's, for parking? Now? It is parking the driveway. It's, it's yeah. more if you look at it, it, it the, the, the natural terrain looks like an area that goes along the hedgerow there and in reality Part of that cleaned off area is not ours, and it looks like it is part of the ring. You would so never know if you drove there. into the parking lot whose property it was. It's part of the... Yeah, if you looked at the parking lot, you'd assume that the line was drawn in a different spot. Uh, I, maybe I'm confused. I thought we were just uh, discussing this one little wedge. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what and I'm that's saying. It's like but a parking area. It's not really the driveway. It's yeah, to the left of the driveway. The entrance is to the 
If you're looking at the picture, it's to the right of the picture. Correct. Correct. Oh. As I said, though, if, they, if something did come up, it got tied up, they had to dig it up or anything, it wouldn't interfere with us anyway. So it would be minimal, but it would take a few parking spots. I don't see any reason why they would need to do anything with that, being the size of it anyways. It's more, it's more housekeeping. Go ahead. Are there any current themes with the licensing? No. No. It's, it's basically just providing for the right to use that property. insurance requirements similar to what we would request if we we're granting a license or granting an easement. Um, but the city insurance covers those requirements. Our existing insurance is no additional coverage is required. So it's pretty much no cost to the city. It's more of a cleaning up of a right of way kind of thing. Again, if the survey hadn't been done in connection with the acquisition of the property from the town, it wouldn't even add up. It happens fairly frequently in real estate transactions. Yeah, well, you can see that it's kind of all pieced together anyway, and it's almost, you can see where someone just cleared it off and didn't realize where the line was, and, and it looks like it's part of one thing, and it's actually not. So it's good that we clean it up before any development happens there. It's nice to have it all cleaned up beforehand, I think. But anyone else want to questions? Or? So are we in consensus to move that to tonight's business? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Beely. Seconded by Mr. Richmond. Call a roll, please. Councilmember Beely. Yes. Twitchell. Yes. Canale. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Bajkowski. Yes. Jankowski. Yes. I now call to order the regular business meeting. Public comments? Yes. All speakers should have signed up in advance for the city clerk. <coughs> Please use the podium. State your name and address before beginning your statement. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes. Please address your comments to the chair. On the first bell, you need to wrap it up because on the second bell, I'm going to have to stop this so that we can continue on with the meeting. John Roach. John Roach, 116 Grand View Terrace, KPO. Uh, I had a question about the uh, property that you were just talking about with the lease and all. Uh, the city created the BDC, and now the BDC created a limited liability company for this piece of land, and now you're going to have to sign a lease and insurance. Should somebody end up, for whatever reason, getting hurt on that land, who's responsible if there's a lawsuit? Is it that uh, LLC and could they cover it? Is it the BBC or in the long run is it the city of Batavia since the city created the BBC? Uh, not likely to happen. Uh, but I was kind of curious, how does this work? Because now it's like three, four different uh, entities tied into this sort of piece of property. And I wanted to make sure the liability insurance, that's not something new, it's already covered under the city policy. But at least now it's not extra money. I also wanted to say I support the idea of the uh, residency waiver for the fire chief and uh, some of the uh, keyboard warrior uh, whining and crying about the chief getting a city vehicle to use for city purposes. I thought it was uh, uncalled for. It's part of an employment package. Just like a lot of other people, you get uh, you sign a contract, you get a salary, you get health care, maybe, and other benefits. <coughs> so, thank you. Okay. James Simon. <coughs> Hi, good evening, Council. My name is James Simon. I live at 16 Ross Street uh, here in Batavia. Um, this is going to be like an address as a concerned citizen. Um, I've been in Genesee County. I've been a resident for nearly a decade. Um, this is the first time you guys have seen or heard of me um, as a concerned citizen. 
Uh, in 2021, I had a mental health arrest. I believe a lot of you recall the incident at JFK Elementary School. That was me. Um, <laughs> I'm obviously recovered since then and I'm doing well. And I just wanted to address some of my concerns, um, my vision for Batavia, and my involvement going forward. Uh, I know a lot of this is working with my councilman, um, Mr. Twitchell, out of the second ward. Um, but I'm glad that everybody is here and able to listen and hear my experience. So I was born in Livingston County, or excuse me, Wyoming County, Warsaw Hospital, uh, educated in Wyoming and Livingston County, and then went to college in Monroe County, where I've done a number of sports and volunteer activities that um, I have available and questioned upon. Um, my concern is for people with mental health disorders and disabilities in our city limits and in our county in general. Um, I have, since the passing of my father in March of 2020, I've had three mental health related arrests. Um, they materialized into felony charges against me and uh, I pled guilty and will plead guilty to misdemeanors, but that's handled by uh, Mr. Welch in the public defender's office. Um, my vision for Batavia, kind of what I really want to talk about, is cleaning up our neighborhoods. Uh, I know downtown in the business district, district that brings in a lot of money, gets maintained for tourism and stuff like that, but as someone who's walked the streets in the day and night of Batavia over multiple districts or wards, uh, I think there's room for improvement in terms of the imagery we show our children and our future. Um, last week alone, I picked up empty booze bottles, uh, empty beer cans, just doing my own recycling. And I just want to know what the city is doing in terms of cleaning up and making our neighborhoods look better and not just for the tourists. Um, so like I said, I will work with Mr. Torchel with that in the future. And um, actually, I don't think about my MCA, but as a historian, I don't like buildings being turned into parking lots, so that's all I'll say on that. But um, is on the Missouri County Historian or something like that? Okay, okay I'll, I've worked with that and documenting the history of that building because it's uh, significant to me. As I uh, have worked out there, attended meetings there, and it's spiritually significant to me. Uh, thank you for your time, and I hope to speak with some of you in the future. Thank you. Okay. Council response to public comments? Eric, did you feel you need to clarify the Creek Park and who owns what over there? Well, the BDC was created by the city, but it's a separate entity. That's the Batavia right. Development Corporation, which is a local development corporation right. under New York State law. Uh, local development corporations can and do set up separate entities to own and develop property. That's the reason that the BDC has done that through its own board and through its own devices. Um, without getting into particulars and opining about particular liability issues, um, like I said, the, the agreement spells out the, the responsibilities of the parties. Basically, it makes the user of the licensed premises responsible for accidents and events that would occur there should they come back to that licensed premises. And again, the insurance requirements are required, but they are consistent with what the city's insurance already is. So there's no additional insurance coverage that will be required for that. And I would say basically that that's similar to what we would ask for from a party that comes to the city or another property owner has to use our property, which is insurance, indemnity, protection, making sure that the proper uh, protections are in place to use the property or to be granted a license or granted an easement. It's fairly standard. Okay. And did you want to maybe explain about all the efforts we're putting in the neighborhood cleanup this year with our code enforcement, additional staffing, and all that? I can let Brett talk about the staffing of the code enforcement office because we did, we did add some staffing over the past year and plan on bringing some more back for the summer. Yeah, exactly. So we've got, right now we've got two full-time code enforcement officers, a, what was at one point a part-time 
ordinance officer split between uh, DPW and split between the uh, police department is now a full-time ordinance officer in our position. June 5th, actually June 6th, I take that back, Tuesday, we will have a part-time ordinance officer coming back from the summertime as well, which will be a three-month position. Um, and I think you'll see in your council updates, um, year to date, I think we're more than double uh, the number of violations and citations that have been given out to property owners over last year. I think it's over 200 this year compared to roughly 84 from last year. So they're out and about trying to clean things up. And that does take some time to go oh, yeah. through the process to allow them to fix it well, without penalty and then if you, they, but they don't, then it goes to court and then there's other Exactly. This time of year, you know, you've got citations that took place, you know, February, March, and you've got to give people adequate time to say, okay, you've got peeling paint, but we don't expect people to go out, you know, mid-April if it's raining 32 degrees out and go paint their house. So, yeah, we do follow up on that, but we do give people, you know, an adequate timeline to, you know, get those repairs done. I mean, the rainy May we've had, it sounded like lawnmowers were going since yes. daybreak until I came here in my neighborhood. Everyone's trying to get their lawnmower because it was just impossible. So, And we're, and we're actually bringing back the same part-time uh, ordinance officers last year. He stopped in, uh, I believe it was last Thursday, so he's already got properties that he's watching and he doesn't start for another month. So he's already keeping an eye on So he's already experienced. He's, up, he's already, he's ready to go. He can't wait. So, so we, we, and we, you know, council, put some effort into this last year as we got construction and things going. The next phase of the city cleanup was to start working on the neighborhoods. And this this is the summer we're gonna do it. So I'm glad to hear we're already way ahead of the game on it. And we'll see how it plays out by the end of the summer, how the result, what we get out of the back. So right. I, I so, appreciate all the efforts because every time I call code enforcement with a concern when when a citizen like this gentleman came forward they were right there and they took care of it. Oh, I, will, I will pass that along. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen them out on patrol, oh, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> several times a day in different neighborhoods as I'm passing through. And so I know he's out there. He's not just in the office center. Right. He's out right. there, you know, looking and, and trying to solve these problems. So that's a good start. Yes, definitely. Yes. Great. It's also good, like with Mr. Roach here, when he comes to speak, that he appreciates the efforts that our that our firemen and policemen are doing in the city, rather than bad mouthing them on the internet, anonymously, of course. They, they not all of them are anonymous. They just they they leave them them. Them. So thank you for the update, and hopefully that answers a few questions. Anyone else want to add in on it? Yeah, I think the one thing we all need to do, everyone here, is just promote more community spirit. We have some landlords in Batavia that are absolutely horrible. Uh, I know what you're going through. They're horrible to deal with. They won't take care of their properties. They wait to serve as summons and then a month later they say, well, I didn't quite understand that or I can't get to it. They can stall for six and eight months. Uh, I had, had a complaint in, uh, around the corner from where I live. There was a mattress in Box Springs, sat on the curb on Main Street for eight or nine days. And, you know, it's just the, the reaction, and, and it looks so poor, you know. I mean, we're all trying to clean up the com community, and here you drive down Main Street, welcome to Batavia, we throw our stuff out on the sidewalk, and, and uh, there's, there's a lot of problems in that area, and Code is doing, you know, a really good job, and their hands are tied with some of those things, and uh, legally, they, there's only so much they can do, but uh, it, we, we all need to try getting the word out and try improving things. Thank you. <coughs> Communications? Brighton Securities is looking to hold their annual shred day on Friday, May 26th from 12 to 2 p.m. This would be at 212 East Main Street. It's free document destruction and disposal day for the public. Any questions or concerns on that? Ever Present Church has requested to hold a carnival on Saturday, June 10th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in their parking lot outside the church with games, food, and vendors. Any questions or concerns on that? Mm -hmm. next. The bid has requested to have their cider walk <clears throat> excuse me, on Saturday, June 17th, 4 to 8 p.m. at the downtown businesses. Uh, this is similar to the wine walk. Um, 
questions or concerns on that. All right, and the next. They had also requested to have a concert series. These are various dates, uh, Thursdays and Fridays in July and August at Jackson Square from 7 to 9 p.m. Any concerns? Okay, and the next. The last one is also the bid for their boxcar derby on Saturday, August 26th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Ellicott Ave. Any questions or concerns on that? No, but I'll, I'll make a comment that if you didn't get a chance to see last year's inaugural race, go down there. It's a hoop. It really is. I took my dog for a walk, and I was just expecting to go down there for maybe 10, 15 minutes just to check it out. Because I live across the street um, from, from the bid director, and so I saw them doing all the car stuff across the street. So my curiosity killed me, so I went down there. I ended up spending the entire morning there. I, just, I didn't want to leave. It was so much fun to watch. And uh, so it was, it's a great event. If you had, didn't get a chance last year, make sure you do this year. So. Uh, yeah, I volunteered and worked there a couple hours last year, and the first thing in the morning helping them. And uh, it, it was great to see the young people enjoying the cars and stuff. But I do have a question. Who sets up the barriers for this? They close the streets and there's barriers set up? They're usually set out for the um, organizers to close off the streets themselves. So, so the yeah, works I, sets them out usually the day before and then the organizers will put them Right, out. I thought, I remember the, you know, we put them up last year, yep. but I couldn't remember. Okay, thank you. They usually deliver them on a corner somewhere near the intersections or whatever in that, in a pile, and then you just, the event themselves will put them where they need them. Any other questions? Okay. The next city council meeting will be held Monday, May 22nd. 2023, 7 p.m., City Hall Council Boardroom, on the second floor, City Center. You've all been given a copy of the March 2023 financials. If you had a chance to look them over, are there any questions or concerns on those? Okay, so are we in consensus to approve the March 2023 financials? Yes. Okay, so approved. You've been given a copy of the April 2023 minutes. Any uh, questions, concerns? Omissions, corrections. So are we in consensus to approve the April 23 minutes? Yes. Okay, we'll go <coughs> Number 44, 2023, the council member uh, on committee appointments. Mr. Ely. 45, 2023, uh, reappointing the bid improvement member. Ms. Schmidt. 46, 2023, the uh, Levin City Center, Mr. Richmond. 47, 23, uh, a waiver for the fire chief, Mr. McGinnis. Number 48, 2023, the elusive surplus police vehicle, <laughs> Ms. Briggs. I tease the chief. <laughs> Real the goal this time. It's a cop thing. It's a cop thing. You can't help it. Uh, 49, 2023, the modifications to the King Plaza pump station, Mr. Canale. And 50, 23, the uh, license agreement with Creek Park, Mr. Biakowski. City Attorney's Report. Okay. City Manager's report. Yes, of course, Rachel is off uh, on vacation. She did provide you with a council update uh, last week. Um, just to highlight a couple things on there, employees right now are in the process of completing year-end reviews for all of their staff. In addition to reviewing the year-end, we're putting a large focus on development and going forward and improving um, not only what they're doing, but uh, as well as how they're doing it. So we're all going through that. The police facility is at 95%. We're getting close to be able to bid the project for construction. Uh, USDA is working to finalize a letter of commitment for the project. We hope to have that finalized within a week. Um, that's actually going to be really big for us because if you're paying attention to what interest rates are doing, the fact we can lock into that USDA rate is going to make it a little more affordable for us. Um, as well as the last thing I'll talk about is Jackson Square redesign is nearing completion as well. We hope to have that out to bid in June. Any questions?
Okay. Committee reports? Yeah, I have to uh, attended the uh, EDC annual meeting. It was uh, quite interesting. And uh, Mr. Hyde explained all the things he's up against and all the things going on. And they had a, a couple excellent speakers. And it was very well attended. I think there were like 255 people in attendance. So it uh, didn't get over to uh, about 2 o'clock. Uh, the parade, Memorial Day parade's moving right along. Uh, one of the problems we're having is people aren't responding very rapidly. It's, you know, while well, we're going to be there, but we're, we're, we have to have a meeting, we have to do this. I actually, uh, any council members that want to attend should respond to me also. And if you need a ride, let me know because I do, I will be arranging some vehicles uh, for people. So if, if any council members would like to be in the parade and want to ride, let, please let me know. So, that's pretty much it. Thank you. I'll be writing. I'll be there. I know. I just wanted to make sure you knew. Uh, yeah, unless it mechanically breaks down. Uh, Mr. President, be careful. Yeah. I haven't had my bike out yet either. Reading the papers yeah, is I know. not this looking week, good. The weather has been not conducive to many actions. Um, any unfinished business? So, resolution. 44 2023, Mr. Beely. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution of appointment of Council Member Bykowski and Richmond, the Audit Committee. Second by Ms. Bridge. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Beely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Smith? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bykowski? I'm saying. Jankowski? Yes. And resolution 45 2023. Ms. Schmidt, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution reappointing Patty Casino to the Batavia Business Improvement District Board. Second, Mr. Bealey. Questions or concerns? Yeah, just, um, I, uh, I, I'm very, very happy that Patty wants to stay involved in that. She was always a, a real uh, a real activist as far as getting us information um, from from the bid meetings and things like that. Um, do we know how often we'll be able to hear about various different things from Patty? Is she planning on, I mean... She said whenever she has news to report, she'll show up at a council meeting and then take the podium and then fill us in. Perfect. And, and the bylaws allow, it doesn't have to be a council member. Right, right, right. Yeah, because she did such a good job on it. And right. I'm glad that she's. Yeah, we looked it up to make sure that it didn't have to be a council member. It's just anyone council wants to apply. Right. Any appointment, sure. Right. Great. Okay. So I she'll just, be here several <coughs> times. Perfect. A year or two. I figured she in. would be. I just, I didn't know what our arrangements were with her. That's, that's the way she left it with me. Anyone else? Okay, call the roll, please. Council Member Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Okay, resolution 46, 2023. Mr. Richmond, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution approving the purchase and sale agreement of 11 City Center. Seconded by Mr. Canale. Questions or concerns? Okay, call the roll, please. Council Member Richmond? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Bealey? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Resolution 47, 2023. Mr. McGinnis, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution approving the residency waiver for the, for the fire chief. Seconded by Mr. Bealey. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Bealey? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. Resolution 48. 
2023. Ms. Kurtz, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to surplus police vehicle. Seconded by Mr. McGinnis. Questions, concerns? <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Council Member Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Vealy? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Resolution 49, 2023, Mr. Canale, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to accept the Town of Batavia's modifications of the King's Plaza pump station project and to authorize the City Manager to execute the NYS DEC BSP-5 form. Second by Ms. Schmidt. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Vealy? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. And resolution 50, 2023, Mr. Bajkowski. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution to approve an access, access license agreement with Creek Park Batavia, LLC. Seconded by Mr. McGinnis. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Okay. Mr. Beard, would you take this and move it to the session? Hey, Council Member. Whereas Article 7, Section 105, 1D of the Public Officers Law permits the legislative body of the municipality to enter into executive session to discuss proposed pending or current litigation. Whereas Article 7, Section 105, 1H of the Public Officers Law permits the legislative body of the municipality to enter into executive session, executive session to discuss the proposed acquisition, sale, or lease of real property or the proposed acquisition of securities or sale or exchange of securities held by such public body, but only when publicly would substantially affect the value there, thereof. Whereas Article 7, Section 105, LF of the Public Commerce's Law permits the legislative body of a municipality to enter into executive session to discuss the medical, financial credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Now there be it resolved by the Council of the City of Batavia that upon approval of this motion, the City Council does hereby enter into the second session. Do we really have to read that whole thing here? Bro? I think you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. I mean, is it necessary to read that? Yeah. Oh, maybe there are a lot of them to just <laughs> there you uh, go. Call the roll, please. Who was the second? Okay. Council Member Bealy? Yes. Quitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes.